Now we come to the third profile, and that's the, the rest of verse 4 onward, and that's the young women of godliness. And Paul asked Titus to address the younger ladies in the congregation. The younger women would be pointed down a pathway that would lead them to becoming the godly older women of great influence in Christ's church. You can't have godly older women if you don't have some younger women in the pipeline that are, that are following down that pathway. And so to be that woman of influence, these were the seven characteristics. Now you notice Paul had, had a set in the profile for the older men, a set of characteristics in the profile for the older women. Now he gives the seven characteristics of these younger women of godliness. They were seven characteristics of what God was looking for on your spiritual resume. You ever think of that? God says, these are the things that you should be working for. You know, everybody wants to get their certification in this and that, and they want to make sure they have everything ready for their job. Well, what about the biggest job we have? We're slaves to God, and he wants on our our resume of our lives these characteristics if you're a young woman of godliness paul asked titus to explain look at verse four to the young women number one and there's seven of them their first priority is to love their husbands what god is saying is the most powerful tool in god's hands for a watching world is a band of godly wives who live out in their marriages christ's self sacrificing love in a selfish world Do you realize that these self-sacrificing women who love their husbands were contrary to the whole culture and as they went through life in the way they talked about their husbands the way they looked upon their husbands the way they interacted with their husbands the way they responded to their husbands they became women who were self-sacrificing in their love in the midst of a selfish world secondly look at verse 5 to love their children right at the end before verse 5 it says that they are to be characterized by being children lovers these women continue as mothers who demonstrate christ nurturing love in a loveless world uh, there there was this idea in the ancient world that the goal was to to just get the kids out there just get them out there and and these women said no no the goal is not to just get them out there it's to nurture them in the love of Christ as they go out that they have this nurturing love that they learn to be to be discipled in the things of God this love was the love of friendship it wasn't just the self-sacrifice and get up in the middle of the night with sick kids love that's agape love this is an emotional love a friendship a nurturing love thirdly verse 5 starts with to be discreet the third element of these uh, women of godliness is the younger women who are in tune with the Lord are also focusing on God in a foolish world they focused on God they they were the ones who were not intoxicated by all the whims and fancies of the world they focused on God they had a, a specific time in, in the Word of God that they focused on him there was a specific time in their devotional prayer life that they were focused on him in their worship that they focused on him and they looked at life as a focused life for God they were discreet they focused on God in every part of their life while living in this foolish world fourthly they're chaste it says in verse 5 they seek to be pursuing modesty in the midst of an immodest world this world says that there is a, a shame in their hearts to ever be less than modest and pure in God's sight that there it, it's not just a, a, a prohibition about about deportment or, or apparel it's just a whole lifestyle that they never want to draw attention inappropriately in especially in the realm of modesty with their body they never want to become an image in some uh, lust-filled man's eyes intentionally and so they pursue modesty fifthly they're homemakers uh, knowing the role God has given them, they seek his well done as good and faithful servants by pursuing homemaking in a, a world that's hostile to that. They actually believed that homemaking was their calling. They believed that that was their highest calling while their children were at home and while they were uh, providing a home for their husband, that, that they were first and foremost a homemaker. Now, there were many other things, and if you remember that night we talked about, this does not mean that, that uh, they never worked outside the home. It doesn't mean that they never were outside the home. It doesn't mean they were chained. It doesn't mean that they were a slave. But it does mean that they saw the specific role that God gave them 
and they wanted his well done, good and faithful servant in that role. Sixthly, they are good. All through life, they're pursuing kindness. This word means a kindness. Jesus went about doing good. Jesus was characterized by kindness. Barnabas was this kind, encouraging man. These younger women are pursuing kindness in a harsh world. Uh, people that come in contact with them pause. They, they see. Uh, in fact, I, I, we were standing, Bonnie and I were standing at this tiny little airport in Cape Cod a few weeks ago. And, and as we were interacting with each other, the way that Bonnie talked to me, the, the lady at the counter just paused and she said, Do you two act like this all the time? You, because she's so used to the harshness of, of people that when kindness comes out, people notice that. They, they comment on that. They, they observe that. And we're to be pursuing kindness in the midst of a harsh world so that they will not glorify us, but glorify the one that prompts that kindness because it's energized by God's grace. And here's the last element. Uh, obedient to their own husbands. Look at the end of, of verse 5. That the word of God may not be blasphemed. Finally, these women who are in step with the Spirit of God, who are energized by grace, pursue submission in a rebellious world. You notice that it says that they are obedient to their own husbands. Now, that's a sad translation of the word. The word is not the word like children obey your parents. It is that they are hupotasso, that they are lining up behind their husband. They see that, that their husband and they have a gender-specific role in the home and in the church. And they go, they, they attend to their position. They don't try and do his. They line up behind him, as the scriptures say. It doesn't mean, uh, subordination does not mean inferiority. Jesus Christ is co-equal and co-eternal with the Father, but he is subordinate. He is uh, always doing the will of his Father. Co-equal, but doing his will. The Bible never says that there is anything less than equality in Christ between men and women. But we have gender-specific roles. And this godly woman younger woman pursues submission.